Hello everyone, my name is Tosin Ajibade and on this episode I'll be talking about influencer marketing with Lassisi Elenu. <laughs> so if you guys are just watching or you're just seeing this video for the first time, then this is for you. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hi Lassisi, how are you doing? Fine, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, very well, very well. So uh, can you tell us about yourself? Okay, let me start with this. My name is Laisi Olari Waju Usman, I can be Joshua Peters. Okay. And when you say the Peters, Peters. you have to emphasize <laughs> on the Ters. Okay. Third. If not, there's no essence. Okay. My name is Lassisi Eleno, that's my alter ego. My name is um, Nosa. Um, I'm a happy guy, even though I portray the attribute of a very terrible and um, annoying person. I, I enjoy what I do. And um, it's easy for me because um, I normally enjoy ranting about things. Mm. You know, it's something I would, you know, I find amusing, out of fun. You know, just having a conversation with, a, with my brother or sister, just talking about an event that has just, um, you know, happened. And um, so talking to them, it was easy for me, ranting about things. I could just see someone walking on the road and has a funny step and I'm like, and the next thing I'm like, I'm just imagine people, okay, now where should they work out now? What, where should they work out like that? You know? So it was really easy for me. So hence the whole character, La Cici it, um, it was easy for me. It was really easy. And um, um, circumstances, happenings around in our community, our society, it made it more easier. You know, I just look for a twist around it to make comedy, to make it comic and funny. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So you started when? I started, I think, um, in the middle of 2017, that's when I, I put out the first video. And uh, it was a bit shaky at the time, for a few period of time, until it gained some sort of momentum in, um, I think, September, October. I think early October. And uh, ever since, I had to hold on to that moment, mm. because um, a lot of times people lose that opportunity, you know. And um, I was really happy, and also God also kind of, um, assisted me in doing that because I could have lost it. It would have just been a thing of, oh, a video trended and that was it. But I had to hold on to the fact that, oh, this could be a thing. And it was the, you know, the breakthrough I was always looking for. So yes, as soon as it happened, I just held on to it. All right, so far you've talked about your journey, how you started in 2017, yeah. you know, and how everything, you know, worked for you because you found a niche, if you saw something that you'd always love to talk about, which mm -hmm. is very, very important. So, um, with all of that, now, as the brand La Cielino is big, you know, not just big, but I think... Still growing. The, very growing, yes, it's really growing. And there was a time you, nobody knew who was behind the, True. the face. So, and then there was a time you just, you came out, I think it was an interview, I saw your face for the first time. Oh, like, yeah? Oh, wow. So, this is the person behind this account. So, um, having to look at all of that, what has been your journey like? And then, how many brands have you worked with so far? Well, the journey has been smooth. Well, sometimes we face some sort of um, turbulence or gets a bit bumpy, but it, um, I sort of surmount them every now and then. Um, the journey and um, brand um, collaboration, I have worked with a lot of brands, uh, uh, quite a number, you know. And I think everyone have, um, I think every one of those brands sort of had their, um, how do I put it? I sort of enjoyed it because um, it is a challenge. You know, making your normal videos is different from making a branded or an ad for a particular brand. It puts you in a place where you have to really, really think. You know, well, for my normal videos, I also think so, some are spontaneous. I just get them and I create them. While some, you have to really, really think about them. So, working with brands has, you know, it is my joy. Yes, you make money from it while doing it. At the same time, I put so much effort into it just to make sure the next brand sees it and say, okay, no, I love what he did with that mm -hmm. brand. So that is my goal. Anytime I'm working with a brand. So I've worked with, with so many, I don't even know how to start I naming know. names, <laughs> but a lot, a lot, a lot, you know. You know, this, you know, so in Nigeria, people will say, have you, have you seen somebody offend you? Mm. And you apologize, but I say, no, 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 it's okay. No, small thing. <laughs> But deep down, the person is like, I'm going to kill this guy, you know. So my point is this. For the brand naming, they are, they are numerous. 
and I cannot start naming names. Mm. So I don't want to name a few name and the rest to. will say, ah, Ross, you didn't even mention us, man. Uh -huh. We were one of your guys last year. <laughs> I know they remember. So All I worked right. with a few, a number of them, and it was, it was really fun working with every one of them. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Lassie, can you mention the campaigns you enjoyed most? Hmm, let me see. Um, quite a few. Um, I think any um, campaign that is very that on a normal day tends to be very organic. Things that are highly relatable, things that start with breath, mouth odor, <laughs> things like body odor, maybe if you're advertising for a soap brand, for mouthwash brand, for, you know, all of that. Things like, um, I think drinks too, also I enjoy them working for some, you know, bottling companies. Um, drinks also have a way, be it alcohol or non-alcohol, I was able to really enjoy because those are things you use every time. You know, if you're, if you're a person who loves drinks, you will definitely be able to relate to what I say about drinks, even though it's not alcoholic, you know. Remember for, I can't remember, what, what brand was this? It was an alcoholic brand and, uh, okay, it was not an alcoholic brand, it was a campaign about drinks. So the concept behind it was doing a skit about people who would just hear the word drink and start thinking you're a sinner and it's alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be alcoholic because you're saying drinks. What kind of drink, you know? Yes, so, but a, a few, you know, when times like this come and you start asking questions, trust me, in that moment, you just blank out. I can't even remember all of these things except I go back and I'm like, oh, and I'm pretty sure when I get home, I'll be like, I didn't remember to talk about this mm -hmm. one. So I can't precisely say this was it, but I certainly enjoyed some campaigns especially those that were highly relatable, things that people on a daily basis everything. a lot of people would experience, you know. Everybody goes out and one person they follow you talk with the mouth is smear. You're not gonna want to tell and say bye bye alpha bros. <laughs> you not know say your mad is smear. Yeah. You know. Has somebody ever offered you sweets before? Uh no. My sister I know they like you. <laughs> I, I, you say ah no. You don't want to really tell me. No 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 it's okay. Lie Nobody on has. No, no. They don't offer me sweet before. Okay, I've they offered you sweet before. Now they tell you so. They okay. have offered me sweet. Okay. But that day, might explain the sweet story. Oh. Okay. Not be say we just they 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 the guy you give me sweet. No. Okay. He bought the sweet. Uh huh. Now me tell me buy the sweet. Uh huh. Say ah, uh, don't you have you tried this sweet before? Okay. Minty sweet. He now say okay, so he bought and gave to me. Mm. I advised him to buy. Mm. The boy, I he think he it. was thinking, bless say, my mouth said, <laughs> don't they, you know. So, but that was it. So yeah, I had a good time doing all of that. All right. Yeah. All right. So last to say, what's your view on brands collaborating with influencers to increase their visibility on social media? It is a way to go. It is. Yeah. And in this moment, time and age, it is everything. I'm not saying it because I am an influencer. I'm saying it because as a normal person, I spend a ridiculous amount of time on social media so definitely that is a way to go you know it has brought about so much there I think it's just the journey of life there comes a time when um, change is always constant it is the most constant thing on earth and when there is a need for it you should follow suit mm -hmm. You know, and there was a time that radio was the in thing. I'm not yeah. saying it is still, it's not working, but there was a time it was the major thing. There was a time it was TV, newspapers, magazines. Then every, to know who is a fly boy, you see them with a newspaper. Although there's still people who would never trade any other sort of information for newspapers. But they are the elite, the, not really elite, I wouldn't say elite. The, I think older generation, they still appreciate the, the value of newspaper. But, this new generation, and trust me, it is the younger generation that patronize almost anything. They might not directly, but they can influence someone to buy it for them, you know, indirectly or directly. So they might not be the direct consumer, but they can, a child of 13 years old on social media can, might not have 20,000 naira to buy something mm -hmm. because she's still in school probably, but she has that influence to say, mommy, daddy, uncle, brother, sister, I want you to get me this. Oh, I saw it somewhere. There. Oh, where is it now? Now, those older ones might not even be frequent on social media, but these younger ones can always, and trust me, 
the younger generation. You don't want to know how many young people have insulted me on social media. <laughs> I'm a 12 years old. Are you serious? Yes, you know, I'm just saying because they are the ones that, trust me, yeah. okay, look at someone like Justin Bieber. Yeah. Half of his fans are, are almost like kids, yeah. you know, and they are the ones who make him rich in his concerts, his shows, sell out. Yeah, they're mostly young generations. So trust me, it is a way to go. And I think they also understand. So they are taking um, it to another level. The only thing is they, they sort of compromise it in the sense that they are not willing to really pay for the service. You know, in as much as it's a good thing to do, they want to really bargain and cut and say, oh, no, it's just like with one thing, you know. But it's, I think it's a Nigerian thing yeah. too. Yeah, I think in civilized countries, I've seen a breakdown of influencers in, you know, um, in the Western um, side and, you know, the kind of figures they would charge you to make something happen because, you know, they care less about if people actually buy it or not, or not. but it is a standard. They have people who would, you know, and definitely you have to pay for it. But I think it's a way to go and I'm happy they have um, taken that um, step. Which social media platform do you think would be the biggest in 2019? Hmm. I am a big fan of Instagram, and that is how where I have my strong um, my strong um, ties. Mm, nonetheless, mm, I actually think it's 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 going to be Instagram. Why? Because we are graduating into a point where people are more sort of interested in audiovisual, mm -hmm. not just audio something they can hear and also see. I think a lot of people would relate to it. If I were to pick up something now or make a sound and show you that same thing, and on the other hand, I'm just making a sound, I can't see anything. I think a higher percentage of people would react more to what they can see and hear than what they can just hear alone, you know? So this information is, it dwells on Instagram. Twitter, on the other hand, has always been a, a place where people, you know, there's this, I think um, Twitter people are, how do I put the word? They are the... Intellectual. I don't want to use that word intellectual. I don't like to, because when you say intellectual, people make it look like other people on other platforms are they're no. stupid. <laughs> I say they don't know book or they don't get sense. Okay, no. Okay. They are, they love to think very well. Oh, yes. Their mind is race. Yes. You know, they're too like mass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and funny enough, I've seen some major scam on Twitter too. Mm. People that will be forming Sapio Seshua, mm. Sapio Seshua, they are trying to Sapio Seshua, and they don't know shishi about it, they don't know anything, they don't know book, and be forming, you know, you know. But for me, I strongly think um, um, Instagram would have this year for me. Well, let's see what makes you, you know, powerful as an influencer. Mm. My First, I'll say consistency, by being able to deliver when people are expecting, especially for major occurrences in the country. I feel as an influencer, you have to seize that moment. For example, there is some sort of controversy today, top names that you probably know, mm -hmm. or um, I don't know, maybe a football tournament, or I don't know. I think. Fans and followers always look forward to that person they're following to have something to say about that event. So consistency and also your delivery. Now, if you've followed me over time, you know my form of um, comedy is more like poetry. I tell stories most of the time. So I probably want to tell you that I met someone I, I knew in secondary school today, but I will not start off as that. I could start telling you how when I was when I left the house, I was hungry, so I had to go back home. I got to my forgot that I don't have food, and I came back again. Then I was on the run. I remember, ah, shit, I have one, right. oh, one fish, and I got it. It was not sour. Then I said, let me just leave it, you know. So I tell stories with it. So I think my strongest tool is that because we are different in our dynamic forms or different forms, but. Mine is the ability to tell stories and I know that people would really want to listen to it. So I'm not worried. There are some people that might try it. It probably might not work for them. But I feel like I have been able to build it to that point that, oh, where is Lassisi going to with this story? So they would want to listen to hear what the end product is. So 
I think that's my strongest suit. Mm. Yeah. I like the fact that you talked about storytelling. Because yes. if you look at it in 2018, storytelling, uh, the rise of influencers basically are actually going to take over uh, 2019. And, you know, storytelling now is now very important in campaigns. Like for influencers, you need True. to now start, you know, imbibing the use of stories. True. You know, your content. And all. So I, I like the fact that you, you know, talked about storytelling. storytelling. Yeah. It actually is, is, is vital, you know, and also storytelling helps again when it is something relatable when it is something you have experienced someone you know might have or it's something your subconsciousness says oh this is highly possible you know sometimes there's a little bit of lies exaggeration fiction but it is still something you can relate to you know so i think um, that's my strongest suit as an influencer mm -hmm. can you tell us about the content creation process for you because you, you, have, you have videos, you know, skits, you create skits, you tell stories. So what's the process like? Well, uh, for me, it's, um, my method of production is not so tedious. It is for me personally because it's a mental thing. Sometimes it takes hours before I get it done, before I nail a particular skit the way I want it to sound. You know, but I don't have the I don't have to use um, well a time I'm getting to that point where I want to start doing something other than my regular you know round videos. But um, the few things I have to do is just constantly think about what I want to talk about. I reminisce, reminisce and chew and chew and munch on it in my head. And if it sounds good enough, then I just hop into my car. I love the car because a lot of people have asked why the car. Mm -hmm. It is like my studio. You know, it is, I enjoy that quiet space, you know. I, I don't know, every house I've been to to make a video, there's always that sound I don't like, it keeps popping in the, in the video. It's either it's echoing or it's, I don't know, it's not, and I, I never, I've made videos, I've, I've posted videos in the past that are not, that were not made in the car, but I enjoy the car. Um, that, it feels like an oven, I'm just there, I can think for as long as possible. It's just running, I'm thinking, and when I'm ready, I can shout for as long. Although even when I'm shouting, it gets so loud that people are like, okay, what's happening? What's happening? You know, <laughs> but it takes a process, it takes a while, especially when it's an ad. And I do not, because I don't really like um, going, um, what's it called, with, especially if, this, the, the, if they are giving me a script, I don't really like working with script. I like it to be very organic. So, yeah. So it takes, it, it takes quite a while, but... Um, there's not too many cameras, so it's just my phone, Snapchat, to record, so it's easy. Yeah. Awesome. So in terms of content creation, what do you think brands are getting wrong? Mm, okay. One too many times I've had to tell my manager, I tell these people who came to you that I, Lies your learning why do Mona can be Joshua Peters, will not, and I repeat, will not do this kit like this, you know? Social media is a place for fun for me. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a classroom. It is, not a, it is not some sort of lecture. So if it is too stringent, if it is too direct, if it is too, and now, hooray, be a part of the, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm taking it too far, you're going back to radio. Don't give me radio on mm. social media. You know, so but they are used to that concept, they are used to that idea, so they think that will sell. But we tell them, no, it would not, because I have my followers, I know them, I am the one that makes these videos, and I'm the one that posts them, and I see how they react to them. I go through, even though I cannot really comment all the time, but I see the response, I see the impressions, I see the reach, I see all of these things, and I know the kind of concept that would work for your brand. But they're like, no, you know, the brand is like this. Not they do like this, they explain that the brand is like this. <laughs> Not they show me your armpit. They yeah. Forget, I know what to do here. And you're like, okay, just do it. Then, I've, and it gives me joy if I, I suggest a particular idea, especially when we're going back and forth on a particular video. And that particular video does extremely well. It gives me so much joy to now say, I told you so. Mm -hmm. You just say, if you had done that one, we did not say, you stand and say, everybody, no. You know, so a lot of times they need to cut um, the influencer some slack, let them try their own way. Yes, we are not always right ourselves. There are times we also think this might work, but it might not work. It's not a guarantee, but I think to an extent we have a higher tendency to determine what would sell and what would not.
so they need to understand that it is up to us to make that call and not them uh, can you tell us your top three influencers on social media hmm let me see let me see let me see let me see, let me see. Oh, there are so many people okay i love Wuli Agba so <laughs> much he gives me joy you know Wuli Agba is um or they are one people that I laugh just by just by watching them the first five seconds. You know, Wuli Agba is one of the people that would give a birthday shout out to someone and I'm still laughing. It is that bad. Yeah. He probably would want to say, oh, oh, Lord, the super get today is your birthday. He, I don't know how he does it. But the way he screams when he's trying to, I just love them daily. I love the whole crew and I, I, I really love them. Um, let me see. Um, my head is jam right now. I can't even remember anybody. <laughs> What's happening? I love Clint. I love Clint on code. Yeah. I love Frank Donga. Frank Donga is lovely. I've always been a fan since his days of, you know, interview from one job to another. I'll be paid to five star. <laughs> you know, I love I love Shaggy. Yeah. I love Shaggy. I love Lively. These are people that I you know I work with constantly. Oh, so these are the names that are popping up. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. Who do I love again? I love, I love so many people. I love, I love Maraji. I love Maraji. I love her work. I love. There are a lot of them. Honestly, my brain is not really thinking, but I love so many people on social media. You know, I love Arule. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everybody has their own what they bring to the table and it works it's one big nigeria we can still everybody has their fan and they still relate to what they're talking about mm -hmm. and it's so good so yeah how can we find you on social media okay so it's lasisi elenu l-a-s-i-s-i elenu e-l-e-n-u and that is what i use on all social media platforms on facebook twitter instagram and snapchat so it's just just that word. There's no full stop. There's no underscore. Just lastly, just one word. And then one word on all platforms. And on, um, yeah, that's it. That's it. So I've been meaning to ask one question. What inspired the name Lassisi anyway? Nika, can you hear me? <laughs> um, the name Lassisi is just simply Lassisi is my dad's name. Aww. I always found it funny because we wonder how we got that kind of name, Lassisi. What do you mean? <laughs> Are you funny? The Elenu is just a big mouth, so I had to put it together. Because when I started, it was, I was gaining momentum. So I, was, I really wanted to give it a name so people could... Something that would seem very easy to just flow with. And um, I got lucky. No one had the name on social media. Even the handles were just blank. So I was able to just secure it at the time. So yeah, last this is my dad's name. I borrowed it. So I did, oh, I'm at the tight once in a while. I did, Royalty. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did tight. <laughs> so guys, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Uluruspagel. Also subscribe on YouTube, Uluruspagel TV. You can also follow me on social media at Little Synergy Party. And until next time, it's bye for now. <laughs>